Uh, so uh, the uh, topic is group theory and triangulated categories. Um, this will not be group theory. Uh, it will involve some triangulated categories, but mainly that's uh, as uh, inspiration, you might say, for or motivation for looking at uh, some particular modules. Uh, I'm actually more talking about uh, some objects in uh, triangulated categories. Uh, but I'll, but let's go on. So here's my, oops, wait a minute. There we go. All right. Um, so here's some notation. Ke is going to be a field of characteristic. P will assume it's algebraically closed. This is just to make things easier, you might say. Uh, G is going to be a finite group. It could also be a group scheme in some places. There will be places where only group works, but uh, but uh, group scheme is it, it can be generally uh, thought of that way. So you've got two categories, the module category of finitely generated modules and all modules. Uh, every module has, in, in particular, has if it's finitely generated, it has a dual. I should have said this carefully. Um, and we have a tensor product, which works for all modules uh, given by the Hopf algebra structure. If it's a group, then the Hopf algebra structure is just the diagonal um, but at uh, any rate, if you, you do have a Hopf algebra structure for the group schemes too, of course. Uh, need a little bit of notation. This I'm going to use the omega notation. Omega is the uh, of M is the uh, kernel of a projective cover onto M. Uh, omega inverse is the kernel of an injective, uh, the co-kernel of an injective hull. Uh, uh, M, the, you'll, rem, you'll remember that uh, projective modules and injective modules are the same. So uh, this is a self-injective ring. KG is a self-injective ring. And, uh, and so you, you do have these properties uh, that you can iterate the uh, omega and, uh, and, you, and you always get this thing that omega of M of omega of N is omega of N plus M. Uh, the, this requires an omega zero, which is omega zero is the uh, is the uh, is the, just the non-projective part of the module. Um, okay, uh, stable category. You all probably already know this. Stable category objects of finitely generated KG modules. What you change are the morphisms, um, which where you factor out any morphism that factors through a projective. So you get rid of the, the uh, projective mor morphisms. Uh, this is a tensor triangulated category. The triangles correspond roughly to exact sequences. And the shift functor is this omega inverse. That is the co-kernel of the injective hull of a module. OK, so the triangles look like L to M to N to omega inverse of L like that. OK. Now we have we have a notion of support variety here. Uh, cohomological, the cohomology, cohomological variety, is the uh, is the proj of the cohomology ring, of the group or group scheme, as the case may be. Uh, it's the uh, projective prime ideal spectrum of that of that ring, meaning uh, meaning it is the set of all. Uh, uh, homogeneous prime ideals uh, with uh, with the usual topology that you get from that. All right. Uh, and so for M, a finitely generated KG module, then you've got this V sub G of M, and it's the closed set of all primes uh, that contain the annihilator of X to MM. In other words, these are the prime ideals that, uh, that contain the annihilator of all the cohomology involving the module M, all right? Uh, for infinitely generated modules, there's also a notion of support variety. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a subset of V sub G, I should, I should that's, a, that's a misprint. Uh, it should be a subset of V sub G of K, that is of the entire pro, uh, uh, projective spectrum. Uh, and it's and it's determined by uh, 
by basically um, uh, projectivity along flat maps, uh, which we which we call pi points. This is a this is a notation and notion uh, developed by uh, Eric Friedlander and Julia Pepsova. Um, uh, so a pi point is a flat map from a truncated polynomial ring into KG, where you are allowed to make field extensions of the uh, of K. So uh, you have to extend, of course, the uh, the the definition of your group scheme too, uh, and and there's an equivalence relation on these, and basically the equivalence relation is that uh, that two pi points are equivalent if well, for any finitely generated module, kg module, you uh, the uh, in the uh, restriction along those pi points. Uh, is uh, is is either both projective or both not in projective. In other words, they measure projectivity of uh, of finitely generated modules um, of the same. So this is this is the notion of a pi point, and we're, I'm going to use this quite a bit. It's uh, it's very convenient for for what I want to do uh, in this. Okay. Uh, thus, the variety of M, as I say, is the set of all alpha, uh, such that this restriction is a projective module. These pi points um, are give uh, the the collection of all equivalence classes of pi points is homeomorphic to the variety, the prime, uh, the projectivized prime ideal spectrum of the cohomology ring. Um, uh, the reason being that if you have one of these one of these pi points like this and you restrict the cohomology ring along that it basically gives you a prime ideal and so this is the association that you get so uh, so the, the I, we, we sort of use the uh, the the pi points are a rank variety of sorts uh, and uh, and these and we use these to measure projectivity and such. Okay. All right. A thick, a thick subcategory is one that's triangulated in uh, ST mod and closed undertaking direct summands. And uh, well, that's the definition of, of a thick subcategory. It's one that's basically triangulated and closed undertaking direct summands. Uh, it's a thick tensor ideal if, in addition, it is. It is uh, as the ideal property with respect to this tensor product that we have in the tens in a tensor triangulated category. Uh, that is to say, if I have a module that's in the subcategory and I tensor it with an object that's that any other object, I get something that's in the subcategory. Okay. And, uh, and then I'll remind you of a theorem that was proved by uh, Dave Benson, myself, and Jeremy Rickard. Uh, several years ago, uh, and that is that there's a classification of the thick tensor ideals in this in uh, in the case of uh, the stable category of a group algebra, and it it's a it's a it's a collection you can you can uh, classify the thick tensor ideal by basically by the uh, uh, varieties of its objects. In other words, it's for any thick tensor ideal, it is the uh, collection of all uh, collection of sub varieties of, of the uh, B sub G of K. Uh, it's got to be closed under specialization and finite union. Uh, and it's basically any an object is in the subcategory if and only if it's support variety is contained in that subset. Okay. And, um, and so a theorem of Jeremy Rickards, uh, it says that if we've got one of these thick subcategories in, uh, in the stable category, uh, as, as above, then there's this distinguished triangle uh, in this in the, uh, in the large stable category. Uh, where E and F are idempotent modules, and these satisfy 
certain conditions. Uh, one of the condition is that, that the uh, variety of E and the, is basically uh, the set of all points in the V that you started with. And, uh, and the variety of F is everything else. So these two, these two uh, modules, E and F, uh, if, you, if you take the union of their varieties, it's the whole of, the, uh, whole of V sub G of K. If you take the intersection, it's empty. So they are complementary. That's one of the things. They are idempotent modules in the sense that, uh, that if you tensor each with itself, you get itself back in the stable category, meaning if you do, the, do this in the module category, you get itself plus a projective module. Uh, and uh, if you tensor each with itself, if you tensor F, E times F, you always get a projective module. So this is a property that we have, okay? Uh, and now what we want to do is this is all associated with uh, localizations. Uh, so um, so uh, if the localization goes the usual way, if I've got a thick subcategory of a triangulated category, then the localization at that thick subcategory is the thing whose objects are same as those in S, but the morphisms are obtained by inverting morphisms if the third object in the triangle is in the subcategory. So basically you are going to get rid of anything that is uh, in the subcategory as an object, uh, but you're going to invert the maps. So it is a localization process. That is, you're going to just add a bunch of inverses in, you might say. Um, and so a morphism, what does a morphism look like? Well, if you're going from L to N, you go from L to M uh, by something, and then you go by something that you can invert. So it's going to be gamma followed by theta inverse. So the thing you invert, of course, means that the third object in the triangle of this morphism is in the subcategory. And now what the point of this is, is the tensoring with this module F of V, if you remember, uh, F of V was this thing that you got in the dis this distinguished triangle that you got. Tensoring with that is the localization functor. Uh, so this is a this was all worked out by uh, by Jeremy Record, uh, Paul Balmer, and, and Favi have a have a nice paper where they do this in more general greater generalization for uh, tensor triangulated categories. And uh, I think they would call this a Bell's field localization, but I mean, you know, it's uh, in our situation, it's the same thing. Uh, there's a, some subtle difference between Bell's field localization and Verdier localization that I think uh, disappears when, when you're talking about something as specific as a, as a, as a group algebra. Um, so in particular, what we get is that the endomorphism ring of the trivial module in the localized category is in fact equal to the endomorphism ring of this F of V in the, um, uh, in the, in the stable category, in the large stable category. So this, this gives us some reason to think that, they, that you might want to know what these, these endomorphism rings are. And, uh, and so that's the first thing that I want to address. Um, now, there is, there, is a, there is one case where you can actually say what this endomorphism ring is. And that is, I suppose you just take one element, non-nilpotent element in the cohomology ring, uh, and you look at the, uh, the variety generated by that element, that is all prime ideals that contain that element, look at the thick subcategory that that variety determines. Um, and, um, and, then, and then you want to know what the, what the uh, endomorphism ring of the, of the uh, trivial module is in the localized category. And the way you obtain this is by localization. Uh, what you do is you invert this element zeta and then you uh, and then you, and then you take the zero. This still gives you a graded ring, 
So you uh, so you just take the zero grading of that ring. Okay, uh, and maybe later on I will show you sort of how this works. Uh, uh, so, but that you know, I think something like this was in Jeremy Rickard's original paper. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I had something to do with this this uh, this formulation, but uh, if so, it was so long ago I can't remember. So anyway. Uh, so, uh, so what I want to do is I want to create an idempotent module uh, that where this is not, see, this is a situation of, of an ideal generated die, just a single element and taking the variety of that. Uh, what about in other cases? Uh, and what I'm going to do here is uh, just assume that P is equal to two because that makes the construction uh, much easier. I mean, I mean, much easier. Um, so here's the way we, we, we do it. Uh, I want to look at finite groups of the form H cross C, where C is a cyclic group of order two in this particular case. Uh, H can be any group. Actually, you can do this with group schemes too. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, that is, yeah. If you have, if these could, these could be group schemes, except uh, C still has to be the cyclic group of order two. Okay, uh, take a generator for Z. Uh, let let capital Z be uh, Z plus one. So that's going to be capital Z squared is going to be zero. Uh, but since we're in characteristic two. And the group algebra looks like, well, of, of the cyclic group looks like KZ mod Z squared. It's just a truncated polynomial ring. And so KG is KG KH tensor over K with, uh, with this KZ mod Z squared. And I want the variety to be the, the, uh, the image of the restriction of this V sub uh, C of K. All right, so it's what you get by, by looking at what happens when you take when you look uh, apply the restriction map to C uh, on this for on this on the varieties, okay? And this is a closed point in V sub G of K in this predictive space. And here's what happens: uh, I can construct the uh, idempotent modules in the following way. I take uh, uh, a projective resolution. This is a KH resolution. Um, of K. For the F module, what I do is I add up all the terms in the augmented projective resolution, that is including the K. And now uh, in order to make this into a KG module, what do I have to do? I've got to just define how this capital Z work acts on this. And I'll let the capital Z act by epsilon on P0. In other words, it maps P0 into K and it acts by the boundary map everywhere else. Okay, in other words, it's going to map P1 into P0 and multiplication by capital Z will take P2 into P1, et cetera. Uh, the E module, E module is, uh, is, uh, is just take the projective resolution without the augmentation. And now we let Z act as the boundary map, okay? Uh, again, it's to take P1 and P0, etc. So I have a map of E of V into K. That's going to be the augmentation that takes P0 into K. I have a map of K into the F. That's going to be the map that takes K into this copy of K, which is a submodule. Uh, and uh, and that's, that gives me my triangle. Okay. So... Uh, so what we know from this, as I say, well, not from this, but in general, is that the harm in the localized category from K to itself, endomorphism ring of the trivial module, is, uh, is the morphisms from K into F of V, it's the, same as the more, it's the same as the morphisms in the stable category of F of V, the endomorphisms of F of V in the stable category. Um, now, uh, what happens here is any morphism is uh, uh, in, in the localized category, an endomorphism of K is equivalent to one of this form. It's going to be a map. We can look at it 
uh, in, in other words, normally you'd have to have something, something uh, general in this spot, but in this case, we can always assume that that middle spot is just this F, mo this F module and, uh, or it's, it's uh, I'm sorry, it's part of this F module um, where, the, where the mu maps K into, the, into this, uh, into some, some truncated part of this projective resolution. Okay. Uh, now, so what we recall from this is that uh, if I look at the maps from HOM K into P sub N, that's the nth term of that projective resolution, KH resolution, that's the negative cohomology. It's H sub minus N minus one of, uh, of uh, the, um, of the, of, of the group H. Okay, so it's take cohomology. Um, this is assuming that it's a minimal resolution, which we can just assume. Uh, so as vector spaces, what we get is we get that this is this endomorphism ring is the uh, non-positive cohomology ring of this, of this uh, subgroup H, okay. It's a negative cohomology ring. And it turns out, this takes a little bit of proof, but it turns out that this is actually an isomorphism of rings, okay? Uh, what you have to do is you have to prove that uh, home, any endomorphism extends to a chain map. When you, when you take an endomorphism here and you look at it in here, it, you get what, it, what you get is actually a chain map on the augmented complex. And, uh, and so the, uh, the uh, uh, chain map is, uh, corresponds to an element negative cohomology and the composition of those chain maps is, is the product in the negative cohomology. So, uh, so those rings, so what, what, so what we're saying by the way is that, is that it, H is arbitrary. So given any uh, finite group scheme I can realize it's non-positive cohomology ring uh, and by as, as the endomorphism ring of a trivial module for some in some uh, localized category like this. Okay. Uh, so in characteristic P, you can do the same thing. Uh, it's just a little more complicated to uh, put the to uh, construct the modules. Okay, but we do have an isomorphism of rings like that. Okay. Uh, so what this says is, if H is an elementary abelian P group of rank two or more, then this, uh, then this endomorphism ring is an infinitely generated local ring whose radical has square zero. So the radical is, has co-dimension one and, uh, and, it's, and its square is zero. And uh, in general, if H is any finite group, P rank two or more, then uh, this is an infinitely generated local ring whose radical is nil potent. Uh, what may be surprising about this is sort of not that you get, get uh, nil potents, but that in some cases it's actually, uh, the products are, there are products which are actually non-zero, but they're sort of few and far between, okay. Uh, so this is what, this is situation that you get uh, in this particular case. Now, uh, what I wanted to do is, what I thought actually would be quite easy is to just extend this to other groups. Uh, in other words, we want, want to consider a slightly more general situation in which uh, we have a closed subvariety having dimension zero, that is meaning a finite set of points, okay? And we'd like, and we'd like to say same thing uh, that, that, um, that this, this uh, endomorphism ring of the trivial module, the endomorphism ring of the, of the F module in the stable category uh, has, has this large radical that's, that's nil potent. Uh, I, I originally thought this would be, be really easy. I still think it ought to be easy, but, uh, but it turns out to be a little bit more difficult than I had thought. Uh, first, we need to consider this for elementary abelian groups with P rank at least three. Uh, what happens in this case now, uh, 
I think this is in Jeremy Rickert's paper, it's certainly in the Balmer Favi paper, that if you have a if you have a union of varieties where these are closed subvarieties, and if the intersection of the two is empty, then you're in this sort of Meyer via torus situation. And you get that this F module is a push out of the diagram. So if you've got a finite set of points, you just do this sort of general push out. I think Balmer and Favi called this a gluing, uh, but um, uh, you, you, you do this push out. So, you, so basically, you know what this looks like. Uh, you know what this, uh, what this uh, F module looks like. It's, it's uh, just these things sort of glued together. These are uh, the F modules for each of the points glued together in that part. In that part. So, uh, so in order to do this, in order to do this real quick, you have to remember that uh, that Hom K of F V is Hom K G of F V F V. This is because of that, because of the way the triangle works. Uh, what you can prove is the following. I mean, this is what what I actually went through to prove. Uh, we wouldn't need to assume that K is large enough. Well, I think we were assuming that it was algebraically closed, but that's fine. Uh, suppose you've got one of these pi points. It does not correspond to a a point in V, and you let X be alpha of one. So this is going to be an element. Uh, I'm assuming G is is a is a elementary abelian here. Um, so it's going to be an element in the radical, but not in the radical squared. Okay, and then you assume that you've got any any uh, endomorphism here in this in this set any map from K into F of V. Uh, it has the property with the property that theta of one is contained in the X to the P minus one of F of V. Then what the point is, is that you can limit, you can, you can uh, uh, lift it to a, a, an endomorphism of F of V where the image is contained in the, uh, in this, in this uh, kernel of the um, multiplication by X. Okay, and the point is that this kernel of multiplication by x is going to is going to give you a uh, an ideal in the uh, in the in the endomorphism ring. Okay, so the theorem that you get if again k algebraically closed, g elementary abelian of rank at least three, uh, then alpha and a pi point does not correspond to a point of of v let X be alpha of one again. The ideal uh, I is a set of all classes where theta of one is in X to the P minus one F of V. Uh, then I has is a maximal two-sided ideal uh, whose square is zero. Okay, this is- I mean, X is, is alpha of T, right, in, in both statements. What, what did you say? What was it? You mean X is alpha of T, or am I, am I, am I getting- Oh, ah, yes. Oh yes, that's a that's a bad misprint. Yes, x is alpha of t. Thank you. Okay, so what you get from this is that uh, is that under the circumstances, if I've got a finite group, all I have to assume is that the maximal elementary abelian p subgroups have rank at least two. Uh, no, I want those. You, there's another misprint. Should be rank at least three. Then. Uh, then uh, let V be a subset, which is a finite collection of points. Then the endomorphism ring is, has this unique maximal ideal that's nil potent. Uh, so this is for elementary abelian groups, or uh, this is for any group. Uh, the way you go from elementary abelian groups to any group is you use, uh, uh, this is, you use, a, a, you can use a theorem of mine that says basically if you've got any map that vanishes uh, on re any collection of large enough collection of maps that vanish uh, on restriction to the elementary abelian subgroups, then the composition of those will also vanish uh, if it's large enough. So that's basically it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
uh, and it, it basically uses this, this statement that we've had before. Uh, and that, that is basically what you want to do is you want to do restrictions to the elementary abelian subgroups. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that sort of settled that is to say that was much harder than I thought it ought to be. And maybe, uh, maybe somebody can figure out a more general way of proving that. Uh, the other question that you might ask is, uh, suppose you've got a closed subvariety, uh, thick tensor ideal, KG modules with variety contained in V, and you let use the localized category. Then the question is, uh, if you've got any KG module M, uh, the endomorphism ring of that KG module in the localized category is a, it's a module over the endomorphism ring of the trivial module. Uh, that's not hard to prove. Uh, but uh, the question is, is it finitely generated? In other words, the question is, when is it finitely generated? Uh, and uh, I note here, of course, this applies mostly to compact objects. Um, in the category elements in the stable category. Uh, and it's obviously finitely generated if the support variety of M is either contained in V or disjoint from V. If it's contained in V, then, then uh, it's going to be zero in the localized category. So that's easy. If it's disjoint from V, then its image in the localized category is still a finitely generated module, modular projectives. Okay, so what about the other cases? Uh, well, it turns out that you can go through this and you get an answer that's similar to what we did, what we got before, more or less, and for more or less the same reasons. Um, that is specifically, let's, let's do this. Uh, we take a non-nil potent element, then you use, you let uh, V be the variety generated by this element again. Uh, whole homogeneous primes that contain zeta. Let C be the localized category. Okay. Uh, and then when you get this similar situation to, uh, to what we had before, that is to say, to get X of harm from M to N, you take the uh, all X of M to N, you invert the action of zeta on that, and you take the zero. Uh, take the zero grading of that. Uh, it's uh, this is viewing it as module over H star G K, which we can do. You invert the action of zeta. Okay, so this is a, so this is what you get. Uh, yes, so that's the lemma again. Let me just go through the proof real very quickly. The idea is if we've got a morphism like this. And this one, mu factors through a projective. Uh, I'm sorry, the third object in the triangle of mu is in the subcategory. Then when you, uh, when you uh, take n sufficiently large, it annihilates the cohomology of that third object. Okay. Um, and so what's going to happen is that this composition is going to be zero. Uh, I'm applying zeta to the n to the module m. And consequently, this, this map, this composition is this diagram commutes. Okay. So what, what you get is that this uh, is that I can replace the uh, inverted element by a power of zeta always. And that's what I want. I can always get it as a power of zeta that I'm inverting. Uh, times x times an element of x to m n, and you again you have to take the zero object again the zero grading. Okay. Okay. So uh, so what what is it you want to do? Well, we wanted to prove this lemma. We we prove this lemma, and so if we view x to m n as a module over h star g k, and if m and n are finitely generated, then it's a uh, it it's a uh, it's a finitely generated module. Uh, that is to say, X to MN is finitely generated over H star GK. So this is finitely generated over H star GK. If, if, uh, if I take, so, so if I replace MNN by K, it, it's uh, finitely generated. So, uh, so what I get is that, is that uh, 
is that the collection of homogeneous, pro, yeah, let's say, MNN or finitely generated module, then the harm in the stable category is finitely generated over and of uh, uh, the endomorphism ring of the trivial module. <clears throat> now, uh, let's see, finite generation in other cases, well, you can do the same thing. Basically, you take a, a closed subvariety uh, such that there's a elementary abelian P subgroup E with the property that it's, it's the restriction, the image of the restriction of the variety of E intersected with V is a finite set of closed ports. And you want E to have rank at least three. Take a subgroup of rank two of E, and uh, and what you with this with the property that its intersection with the variety is not zero. Uh, then, uh, if you let M be the induced module from F to G, then the endomorphism ring of this induced module is not finitely generated as a module over the endomorphism ring of, uh, of the trivial module in the quotient category, okay? And the proof is basically based on the following idea. Uh, if you've got an elementary abelian P group, uh, and suppose F is a, is a proper subgroup of V, then an element, uh, phi in the unique maximal ideal of that thing uh, has the property that its restriction to F vanishes. Uh, this follows basically from a theorem that Dave Benson and I proved years ago, uh, which uh, may, you just says that, uh, that negative cohomology behaves badly with respect to restriction. In other words, negative cohomology in elementary abelian P groups going from one group to a proper subgroup always is zero. So uh, this is what we get in this particular case. Okay. And so what you wanna do is you wanna prove this proposition again. Uh, and the way you prove it is basically that is that this action of in the, in the quotient category of, uh, of the um, trivial endomorphism of the trivial module on the endomorphism ring of M is given by this, uh, by a series of things. You can, you can use the, basically an Ekman Shapiro theorem and ad, ad, the usual adjointness to get down to restricting down to F. And then you take this composition in, in, uh, uh, in the, in the, um, in the restricted category, in the, in the uh, category over F. But be careful here because if you restrict to F, then you have to restrict to E first. This restriction is transitive. And when you restrict to E, uh, if this is in negative cohomology, then it goes to zero. So this is basically the way you get that. So you, finite generation doesn't work all that well. So let's see. Okay, I've got uh, 10, 10 minutes left. Uh, let me uh, let me change the subject here and just um, show give you some observations. Uh, all of this is very easy, but just observations of what happens with some of these idempotent modules uh, and and uh, thick subcategories. Um, uh, this I'm, I'm giving you this as a source as a hopefully a source of amusement. I found it very amusing. It's not very difficult at all, but, uh, but let's look at this. Uh, first observation is that there, you can create idempotent modules quite easily. Uh, the, the easiest way to do it is just take direct sum of a countable number of copies of the trivial module. Uh, that's an idempotent module. If you tensor it with itself, it, you get it back again. Uh, and you can play cardinality games if you want. You could do any uh, cardinality of copies of the trivial module and you get it back again. Um, so, so that's true, but these record item potents, the ones that you get from uh, as, as localization functors and, and uh, the 
the E modules and the F modules, and these all have a rather special property. Uh, and that is that if, if I take any pi point, that is any one of these flat maps from this truncated polynomial ring KG, and I look at the restriction of one of these idempotent modules along M, uh, along, along this alpha, alpha, uh, I either get the trivial module that is in the stable category, I either get the trivial module or I get zero. That is, it's either the trivial module plus a projective or it is a projective module. And the reason is you just go back and you look at that triangle that you got and that triangle restricts to the triangle in the uh, in the in the uh, stable category uh, in the in the uh, uh, stable category of the kt mod t to the p, uh, and uh, in that that so that's going to what that triangle is 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 going to be uh, either the only item potent module in that case is k itself. And so it's going to be either K or it's going to be zero. Uh, it, you know, you're either going to get K one end or, uh, or zero or zero. Either E of either E of that thing is K and F is zero, or E is zero and F is K. That's the only thing you can get. So it suggests uh, that another category. So let's look at the category of all modules whose restriction along any pi point is compact or finite dimensional modular projectives. Uh, this, is a, this is a nice uh, triangulated category. Um, it's, um, uh, uh, it, it is, uh, it includes all of these record item potent modules uh, however, it uh, doesn't include sort of the means of constructing them. The means of constructing them requires a uh, homotopy co-limit, which means a uh, an infinite direct sum. So, uh, so, so as I say, this is a this is a nice nice category, but it suggests something else too. Okay, uh, if I've got any collection of uh, points in V sub G of K any subset, uh, I can take the full subcategory of all KG modules with the property that for any pi point, uh, I get uh, restrict and I get something that's um, finitely generated, okay? So um, take the set of all modules like that. Again, this is a nice thick triangulated subcategory of the stable category, okay? Um, uh, so what this suggests is that there might be a support variety here. Of course, I, as I say, you could also play cardinality games with this too. So there might be a support variety here. Uh, how would we get a support variety? Well, let's take any KG module M and let's let U sub G of M be the collection of all points with the property that for any pi point associated to this thing the restriction is isomorphic to a finite dimensional module in the staple category. Okay. Uh, and this is, this uh, seems to be well defined. So, you know, so, um, so that's the definition of, uh, of this thing. Uh, now, whenever you do this, of course, if you've got, uh, if you've got this, uh, it gives you one of these thick subcategories. That is, uh, take the set of all modules having a certain variety. That's a nice thick subcategory, uh, as we just said. Uh, but uh, but this this notion of this thing as a support, okay, is, has one. It has some nice properties, but it has one that's quite unusual uh, or strange, I should say. Okay, uh, and that is, if I've got a triangle. Uh, and I look at the support of, of uh, the modules in that triangle, then uh, the intersection of the support of any two will be contained in the support of the third one. Um, uh, 
this sort of turns on its head the uh, the notion of um, uh, that you would get with the usual support uh, uh, support of a uh, support variety of a module. That is, the usual support variety says that uh, is that the support variety of any any one of the modules is contained in the union of the other two. So this is sort of negates that completely. Okay. Okay, but you know, there's one case where we can actually make this even better. Um, suppose we look at the uh, restricted enveloping algebra of a restricted P Lie algebra. Okay, now this is a nice finite group scheme. Okay, group algebra of a finite group scheme. Uh, it's, uh, but, but uh, in this case, the variety is something that they call the null cone. These, these uh, objects come up are important in the modular representation theory of, of algebraic groups. Uh, so, but in this case, every element of, of uh, V sub G of K has a distinguished pi point that comes actually from the Lie algebra itself. The, as I say, the variety is the null cone of the Lie algebra, uh, which means the set of all elements whose, whose P power is zero, okay? So in this case, we can define U sub G of M to be the set of all points in V sub G of K, such that the restriction along the distinguished by point is compact. Uh, now, the nice thing about this situation is that these pi points that you get, these distinguished ones, are Hopf maps. So they are well behaved with respect to, or restriction is well behaved with respect to these maps or vice versa. Uh, in other words, if I restrict the tensor product of two module, I'm sorry, tensor product is, is, uh, is well behaved with respect to restriction along these maps. If I restrict the tensor product of two modules, I get the tensor product of the restrictions. And so in this case, these, mo these modules, uh, these uh, subcategories are actually tensor triangulated subcategories for an EV. Uh, and again, they contain all of the uh, uh, Rickert item potents. Okay, so this leaves us. Uh, this leaves us. I'll leave you with two questions. These are not triangulated category questions. They're really group theory questions. Well, they're really linear algebra questions when you come right down to it. Uh, and that is, first of all, suppose we've got two equivalent pi points, uh, and and suppose a restriction of a module M is compact when you on one, is it compact when you restrict on the other? Uh, don't know the answer to this. The problem is that that the uh, restriction map uh, does does not work well. Uh, uh, it does not uh, does not work well with things like like tensor products and something like that in general. Um, and and the, so that's that's one question. In other words, if I restrict and I get something finitely generated on one, is it certainly finitely generated on the other? I think this is true. I think it should be true for in any finite group scheme, particularly a group algebra. Uh, and the other question is, is there a general product, tensor product theorem? If I take the, uh, if I take the the uh, the variety of the tensor product of two modules, is it in fact the intersection of the two, or is it even contained, or does it even contain the intersection of the two? Is what it ought to ought to do. And again, I do not know the answer to that. So thank you. Uh, I'm all done. Thank you very much for the wonderful talk, John. Um, let us all unmute ourselves and thank the speaker now, please. Okay. Um, if you have a, if you have a question or a comment, please unmute yourself and ask, or alternatively put them in the chat. Uh, I can't see the chat, so. Well, I guess okay. I got rid of this, so.
Okay, I can see the chat now, but I'd prefer if you just ask. Okay. Any questions? I was wondering, at the, may I ask something about the beginning of the talk when you were uh, considering this example of age cross uh, cyclic group? Yes. Um, but then you said um, you you then uh, maybe you you made one jump there that I could not follow. You you, you then said um, this is essentially what happens with every closed point or something like that. But even assuming that K is algebraically closed. Um, are you? Am I missing something there? I, 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 shouldn't I? Shouldn't C be a, any a generous like cyclic subgroup of, of G? Uh, it how could you reduce to the it, case where it's there? It, it, well, it, the only problem would be in the hop structure. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the only reason why you only place where you would need it to be a cyclic subgroup. Right. Mm -hmm. And in, actually, in the proof. I use the hop structure. That's why I want it to be a cyclic subgroup. However, when you come to the end, it doesn't matter. All you do is apply an automorphism to the group algebra. If you're talking about an elementary abelian group. So, so in other words, once you prove the theorem, then you can apply an automorphism to the group algebra and, and get the same thing. That makes sense? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Do we have any more questions? So maybe just to comment, the 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 U. Well, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I remember the notation U G of M. Yeah. Maybe right. more than a support. It, it, it it's a it's a locus of compactness or something like that, right? It's a it's a locus of yeah. rigidity or locus of compactness more than yeah. the support right which kind of explains why in a triangle the yeah. places where two are yeah so it's right. not so much a, a support in the sense of that uh, i mean yeah i don't know what to call it i just i this i just sort of came upon this and thought well this is kind of funny you know so okay Thanks, thanks again. Uh, there is a, yeah, there's a message in the chat. I think it's about, okay, I know what it is about. <laughs> <laughs> they beat Alabama, was it? They beat, they beat Alabama, yes. Yeah. I don't even understand the game, but I get uh, breaking news <laughs> notifications. I get breaking news notifications from the New York Times, and I got a yeah, <laughs> got an email. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Okay. Uh, any more questions or comments? Anyone? No. Okay, then um, let's let's thank uh, John again. Uh, for the wonderful talk and all the wonderful questions. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, we have Doug Ravenel speaking next week and yeah, maybe I'll see you there. Bye-bye. Okay.